and welcome here to Talk FCP and welcome back here to the channel for another video guys and obviously following El Clasico there is nothing I want to do right now more than talk about that game in a bit more detail. In this video in particular we're going to be discussing five massive game changing moments from that game as a whole. Obviously I've just done my review video that took a bit longer than expected to upload guys apologies for that but obviously in that video straight after the game the emotions extremely high. I still want to go home and when I go home from a holiday I want to watch this game in a lot more detail because there's a lot of things in there we can learn especially from the first half and also the way we adjusted ourselves and adapted in the second half but in this video we're going to look at five game changing moments and a lot of them are to do with the defensive side of our game and things that could have altered the game if we didn't step in and make it count obviously all of the goals are outstanding every single bit of attacking play was fantastic but just these five moments for me really stuck out and really contributed to that demolition at the Bernabeu this afternoon and my number one point would simply be all based around the referee and his officials and for once I'm talking about them and I'm talking about La Liga referee in a very good light. I think the referee today who I'm not sure but I don't think he's refereed a Classico before he was outstanding. He was absolutely fantastic and this is not because he gave a load of decision to Barcelona. It really wasn't like that. I think on both sides today he refereed the game exactly as he should have done. I don't know his name and that's exactly how it should be. If you know a referee and if a referee stands out to you if they if the game is all about them, that's not how a referee should be. As a referee, you shouldn't be noticed. The game should be going on in front of you, and you need to let the spectacle happen. And I think that's exactly what he did today, the referee. He let things flow. He let the game go. And I think you know, as a result of that, we had a really good game between two sides. It didn't get too feisty. No legs got broken. There was a few big challenges. He gave yellow cards to both sides. Obviously, the disallowed goal really early on was a big moment. They got that one right. And there was a few penalty appeals as well. But every single time, the hands were either down by the sides or behind the back and they made very good decisions on that front obviously down the other end Carver how with it with the handball they did well to spot that he gave the right punishment he gave the penalty kick which luckily we converted and I think overall the referee and their officials can be pleased with their work today on both sides they made the game what it was and the second thing that I would highlight around 32 minutes around the half an hour mark there was an absolutely colossal moment in that first half which came from Ter Stegen and this is not the only time Ter Stegen is going to be mentioned in this video but it was an absolute Absolutely incredible see. Before the game, we said that Sergio Roberto had really needed to try to put Ronaldo down the line, and that's exactly what he did. It was out on the right hand side, Ronaldo running at pace at Roberto. He manages to actually get around the outside of him. He does put him down the line, but Ronaldo does well to be fair. He drills the shot across Ter Stegen. It looks like it's going in the bottom right hand corner. Ter Stegen, though, gets down really low to his left. He sticks out his leg and he makes the save with his leg, sticking it out, pushing it round the post, and it was literally inches in it. If he doesn't get to that, it's definitely 1 0 Real Madrid and the game changes on that moment. Ter Stegen with a fantastic reflex save, a really good strike from Ronaldo, but an unbelievable stop from Ter Stegen, which was massive in the context of that first half. And then, just before half-time, the big moment in the game, which just about the luck was shining on our side, and thank you very much for that. 43 minutes gone, just before half-time, it would have been the perfect time to score for Real Madrid. Benzema hits the post, and it bounces out. That was absolutely crucial, because if we're going in a goal down, down, it changes the entire outlook of the game. We've got to go and chase the game now, and that's exactly what we didn't want to do. Going into halftime, it was massive that it was nil-nil. A lot of things came from that, and luckily, that header from Benzema cannons off the post and didn't go in. Thank you, thank you, thank you, luck. But my fourth point had absolutely nothing to do with luck. All that it had to do with was brilliance from midfield to attack, the seamless transitions and the wonderful passing and ability from Barcelona players. And it was the first 10 minutes from we came out of the second half to around 55 minutes. In that time, we scored the first goal. But it was the entire outlook of that second half, which was shaped by the way that we came out. The first half, we were not comfortable. We weren't playing well. We weren't dominating the ball. We weren't doing things as we expected to do. But that second half, the way we came out, the way we conducted ourselves, we looked a lot calmer, we looked a lot more focused and a lot more driven and that gave us the perfect platform to build from. Busquets was a different player in the second half, like I said in my review, the, the way he changed the game was massive and that's where the first goal came from. It came from that dramatic change from our performance from the first half to the second half and the way we changed then in that second half, it completely nullified the threat of the Real Madrid crowd. We said leading up to the game, we had to suck the life out of Real Madrid, we had to get rid of that energy 
energy. The energy that we saw from him in the first half was exactly what could have got them through the game. But the way we set up in that second half, we had control of the ball, we were slowing things down, we were controlling the pace of the game and not vice versa. They had nothing to go on, they had no energy, they dropped in their concentration, the crowd weren't involved as much, and in that moment then, Busquets can get the ball in midfield, he can mess around with it, he can draw Real Madrid out. They were getting more and more anxious, more and more eager to try and get on the ball. They rushed out to Busquets, he was simple, clever enough to play it through the lines, Rakitic then can break, and you know that we work the ball absolutely wonderfully. And it is worth noting, in that goal, how unselfish each player is. Rakitic, when he gets to the edge of the box, could take on a shot, he could make the wrong decision, but he's unselfish in the way that he plays it into Sergi Roberto. He can get the ball, and he could go for goal if he wanted to. He could go for glory, but he doesn't do that either. He plays it across to Suarez, and he's there to easily finish. And I think that goal, like I said in my review, that is what Barca is all about. Fantastic passing, brilliant transitions from midfield to attack, quick, crisp play on the ball, and that's exactly what you want to see. And at the end of it all, unselfish play, team work. That is what gets the job done. Everybody playing as one, competing as one, and reading from the same hymn sheet. We were a team, we showed it with that goal, and what a marvellous goal it was. And my final point would once again be all about Marc-Andre Ter Stegen, and I cannot stress how big his saves were today, because although we dominated the game, in the second half we had all of the ball, we had all the possession, territorially, we were going forward, we were having shots, we should have added to our lead sooner than we did. But obviously, even at 2-0, you know what Real Madrid are like. If they get one goal, particularly in front of their own fans, they can be very dangerous. You've seen them get last-minute goals, last-second goals. They'll find a way of getting themselves back into the game. Credit to them for that. They've got a great mentality when coming back into games. But the massive moment was the fact we didn't allow them to do that. We didn't give them one goal to give them hope. We didn't let that goal happen. And I think PK and Vermaelen at centre-back were fantastic, but Ter Stegen behind them gives you that security. And I just said on Twitter right now, I don't think any longer, particularly this season at least, the discussion should not be whether Ter Stegen is the top three goalkeepers in the world. I think right now we need to start talking about top two, even top one. Some of his performances this season, he has single-handedly stopped the opposition. It didn't matter whether we were defensively good or not. He was in goal and he gets this mindset into his mind where he's not going to be beaten. Today was exactly the same. It wasn't just about the save from Ronaldo. It's not about the save I'm going to mention from Bale. There was a moment from Ramos where he just stood up and he just said, you're not beating me. I've got this. You're not going to get past me. He's just got an incredible mentality. He's ice cool in the, on the ball. He's ice cool when it comes down to shot stopping. He is a fantastic keeper and we are so, so lucky to have him as our number one. And the save that I'm going to mention is from Gareth Bale. Luka Modric has it out wide. All the pressure on us. Real Madrid pushing players forward. Bale is in the box. It's a very close range strike. It should easily be a goal, but Ter Stegen keeps himself big. He puts himself one way. He puts his legs the other way. He gets both angles covered somehow and he stops the ball. And exactly the same thing happened there, not just that save from close range, from long range as well. Bale takes on an effort from long range, he gets down low, he doesn't even quite hold it, Benzema thinks he's going to have a chance, and Ter Stegen just gathers the ball in, calm as you like. I think the entire performance today from Ter Stegen deserved enormous credit. Going forward, we were fantastic, we created chances, we scored some great goals. In midfield, we dominated things in that second half. Like I say, Vermaelen and Piquet were very, very good, and Alba and Roberto as the fullbacks were energetic, they were lively defensively and going forward as well. But at the end of it all, Ter Stegen stopped Real Madrid getting back in this game, and that was absolutely colossal. So overall, guys, with everything that we've been mentioning leading up to this game, going into this game, we've had so much build-up about El Clasico. Could we handle the pressure of the game? Would Real Madrid come on to us and would it be too much? And the way that we started that game, it looked like maybe it would be. Real Madrid came out the block so quickly, but I just think the players deserve enormous credit. And I feel a real bond with those players right now because they made us proud out there. The way they work, the way they work tirelessly, the way they change things in the second half, the way they solve the problems on the pitch, and they just said to Real Madrid, no, we're not letting this happen. We want that league title and we want it as soon as possible. And I'll tell you one thing as well. There was a lot of talk coming into this game about this guard of honour that Real Madrid wanted us to give them because of the Club World Cup title. When that's not really how it's done. Usually you give a guard of honour for a league title. And I'll tell you what, it's going to be really interesting at the end of the season because the Classico at the camp now is just a few games before the end of the season. If we can win the title early, obviously I'm not jumping to conclusions here, but we've got a very nice lead. If we can win the title as early as possible, 
possible. Real Madrid are going to be in the position where they should be giving us a guard of honour and we're going to see how classy they are and all their fans if they actually end up doing it for a league title when you're supposed to do it. That's going to be really, really interesting. Keep an eye out for that at the end of the season. What we've got to do now, though, is continue. We've got some tough games coming up in 2018. We've got Sociedad away from home. That's going to be a tough one. We've got to keep focused. We've got a big lead. We don't want to blow it. We've got to keep going. I trust in Valverde. And coming up now in the break that we have for Christmas, I'm going to be coming up with a mid-season review of what's gone on in the first half of the season. I'm also going to be talking a lot more about Valverde and the things that he's implemented at Barcelona. He deserves some credit. And I'm going to be talking, of course, about all the special performances this season we have seen so far and the very best players that we've seen from Barcelona. Messi was magic again today, as was every single player on that pitch. Leave your thoughts down below, guys. What did you think of the game today? How do you think we played? What were the big moments for you in this game? I am interested to hear your thoughts as always. Thanks, as always, for joining me. I will see you very soon indeed. But until then, it's been an absolute pleasure. Vesca, El Barça. Barça, Barça, Barça.